The Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. of Johnson's Wax Products for Home and Industry present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, B. Benaderet, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. very often that we have the privilege of coming into your home on Christmas Eve. In fact, we figured it out this morning and discovered that it's happened only three times in the past 11 years. Well, that makes tonight a very special occasion for all of us on the show and for the makers of Johnson's Wax. So, on behalf of Fibber and Molly and all the rest of us, here's hoping you have a very happy holiday season. take you now to the Wistful Vista branch of Santa Claus Incorporated, where we find one of St. Nick's little helpers hard at work. He's got a room full of broken toys, a handful of broken tools, and a future full of broken fingers. Ow! That's right. This touching scene has been repeated at intervals all week. And all Mrs. McGee can say right now is... Oh, dear. As we join Fibber McGee and Molly. How's it coming, McGee? Got many more toys to fix? Many more to fix. My gosh, yes. About 150. All together? About five of them are all together. (laughs) The other 145 are all apart. But I can do it. Now, look. You see this little music box? I think I got this fixed. Oh, play it. Okay. Well, I wind it up. Listen to this. Pretty, huh? What was it? Silent Night. <laughs> Look, dearie, uh, doesn't Mother's eager little beaver think his bright little teeth have bitten off more than they can chew this time? No, I got plenty of time. They don't have to be ready till the day before Christmas. I've got a TL for you, McGee. Huh? This is the day before Christmas. What? It is? Sure. Oh, my gosh, I got to get busy. Hand me that chisel and a handful of nails. Thanks. Now, let me see. What will I work on next? <laughs> How about this uh, thirsty little coaster wagon with its tongue hanging out? It needs a new front wheel. I thought maybe if I took a wheel off of this tricycle and made a bicycle out of it, then took the frame off the bicycle and made a scooter out of it, I could use the saddle for this hobby horse, which would give me an extra pair of handlebars, which I could use for, uh... What could I make out of some bars? <laughs> well, I'll think of something. Hey, did you see how I picked up this little toy carpet sweeper? No. Does it work? Oh, I'll say it works. Look. You push it forward, picks up the dirt. Amazing. Pull it backwards, it throws the dirt out again. (laughs) That way, the kid can use the same dirt all day long. (laughs) Don't have to keep running outdoors for fresh dirt. (laughs) I think that's a very good idea. Come in. Well, for goodness sakes, Mr. Wimple. Hello, Pete. Hi, Wimp, old man. You better not sit down anyplace unless you've been vaccinated against hacksaw blades. Well, I can't stay, but only if... My gracious, look at all the toys. Aren't you ashamed, Mr. McGee? No, what for? Opening all your presents before Christmas? <laughs> oh, those aren't his, Mr. Wimple. He's repairing them for children who might not otherwise get any. The school is in charge of distribution. Isn't that nice? Yes. You must be very handy with tools, Mr. McGee. You said it, boy. Why, when I was... Hey, what's that book you got under your arm there, Wimp? If that's zombie comics, can I borrow it when you get through? No, this is, this is just my big book, Miss Eden. Your what, Mr. Wimple? My big book. <laughs> ah. I've been out watching birds today. Oh. I saw a barn swallow, and I'm going to write a nasty letter to the book publisher. Wrong picture, Mr. Wimple? No, but they can't tell me a teensy-weensy little bird like that can swallow a barn. <laughs> oh, they don't really eat barns, Wimp. <laughs> They just peck the grain out of the wood. 
there. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell. Well, anyway, I think I'm going to get my notes together and write my own big book. <laughs> Uh, does uh, Mrs. Wimple go with you on those bird watching expeditions, Mr. Wimple? Oh, no. Sweet face. That's my big old wife. <laughs> she doesn't. Oh, that reminds me, Mr. McGee. Have you got a shotgun I can borrow? Why, certainly he has, Mr. Wimple. But do bird lovers go hunting? Maybe not, Mrs. McGee. But this is for something I've been planning to do every Christmas for ten years. Huh? I'm going to get up early in the morning and shoot sneaky things. What? No, no. Yes, I am. I'm going to get up early in the morning and shoot sweetie face the wild duck for Christmas oh. dinner. <laughs> Merry Christmas. McGee, I don't like to nag, but hadn't you better get busy with those toys? You have much time left, you know. My gosh, I haven't at that. Now, let me see. I think I'll fix up this dollhouse. The roof sags like a restaurant pie. Hand me that hammer, and I'll have this thing fixed before... Excuse me, folks. I forgot my bird book. Oh, here it is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he'd forget his head if it wasn't fastened on. And with Sweetie Face Ron, I'm surprised it still is. Me too. Where's my hammer? I gotta fix this dollhouse. Here now, and be careful. You only have seven good fingers left. Okay. I can take care. Oh, I had a little rabbit, and I wish I had her still. She was good for eighteen carats, so I called her Diamond Lil. <laughs> oh, the what's no Ah, yes, oh, that's dear. <laughs> Look at that dollhouse. If I ever have any toys to be repaired, sweetheart, I hope I can remember to tear up your phone number. This is discouraging, you know what? All them little kids depending on me to fix these toys, and here it is almost time to have the... Come in. Oh, my goodness, Mrs. Carstairs. Do come in, Millicent. How do you do, my dear? Good day, Miss McGee. Hi, Carsty. Don't trip over that kitty car there. You're liable to wind up with your head through a drum. <laughs> Good heavens, what a tremendous lot of toys. Yep. Did they belong to your father? His father? Why did you ask, Millicent? Well, I just thought that no child could cause that much destruction in one generation. These are not my toys, Millicent. And in the second place, I was not a destructive child. Why, I still got a little box camera I was given in 1913. Does it still work, McGee? Yeah, it works all right, but I don't use it. It's too dangerous. Dangerous? Yeah. Cuts everybody's head off. <laughs> but, uh... What, may I ask, are you doing with all these toys, Mr. McGee? Well, the school collected them, Millicent, and McGee was to fix them up for the more unfortunate children. Oh, what a splendid idea. I find myself revising my opinion of you, Mr. McGee. This is a side of your character I had not suspected. Oh, you'd be surprised, Millicent. His character has more strange sides than a Calypso album. <laughs> no, this is nothing any red-blooded American boy wouldn't have done if he'd stuck his big, fat neck out like I did. <laughs> But what a tremendous job you have to do in such a short time, Mr. McGee. Uh, well, this toy trumpet, for instance, can you straighten this out? Well, not knowing how to play a trumpet in the first place, you probably wouldn't know when it was fixed, Millicent. <laughs> oh, well, perhaps I can help. I, I once played trumpet in the orchestra at Wellesley. <laughs> Let me take it. Oh, fine. Here, Carsey. Pucker her up and have a go at the blues, sugar. I mean, uh, <laughs> the sugar blues. Uh, the sugar blues. <laughs> Sugar Blues is more of a trombone number, Mr. McGee. Oh. I'll try the 12th Street rag. <laughs> Although I'm afraid my embouchure is not what it was. Oh, I don't know. With a fur coat on, it's McGee! Hard to... <laughs> Go ahead, Carsty. Very well. <gasps> Lovely. My gosh, that trumpet don't need fixing. That's in fine shape. Uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. And now, if, uh, if you'll excuse me, I must go down to the Maritime Union headquarters and get Mr. Carter's Christmas present. To the Maritime Union for a Christmas present? Yes, I'm, I'm getting him a new crew for his yacht. <laughs> well, Merry Christmas to both of you. <laughs>
You know, dearie, she's right. The time is awfully short to do much about these toys. I know it. Maybe if I work fast, I'll... Oh, my, my tools are no good. You know, look at them. The chisel is nicked, the pliers are falling apart, and the hammer is looser in the head than I am. I got to get down to the hardware store quick and get some new tools. Where's my hat and coat? Where's that bait can I was hiding my money in? Well, now, if you can't remember where you hide your money, dearie, I'm sure oh, I... Oh, I remember. It's right here behind the dictionary. Here it is. Well, I got to get going. Well, I'll see you later. Goodbye. Wait a minute. You didn't kiss me. Huh? Oh. Goodbye. <laughs> ah, there goes the good kid. And who does he think he's fooling? <laughs> Billy Mills in the orchestra and the parade of the wooden soldiers. suit on me and drop me down in the chimney of a blast burner. Now, wait a minute, McGee. What are you going to tell her? Are you going to tell her you spent all your Christmas money for new toys? My gosh, I don't know. Well, you got to say something. Oh, yeah? The reason I got into this mess is by talking too much. I know, but what are you going to do now? Gee, I don't know. Well, think. I am thinking. The only thing to do is to stall, boy. Stall for time. Okay, that's my only option. I'll stall. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> was the hardware store open? Yeah, it was open. That's nice. There's some hot coffee on the stove if you want some. Thanks, kiddo. Well, why don't you ask me? Let's get it over with. Here's a Christmas card from Aunt Sarah. Oh, yeah. I bet there's postage due on it. <laughs> that old dame is so tight she couldn't put on her hat without lifting herself off the floor. Well, you got it wrong this time, sweetheart. You know what? She sent us a $500 check for Christmas. What? She did? 500 bucks? That's right. And she said if the Republicans are elected in 1948, she'll sign it. Oh. <laughs> well, come on, McGee. Why don't you tell her, you big ape? You yellow or something? Uh, uh, Molly, I, I got something to tell you. All right, dearie. What is it? I, uh... Well... Tell me later, McGee. Come in. Oh, for goodness sakes, it's the mayor, McGee. Hello, Your Honor. Good evening, Molly. Hello, McGee. Hi, the fifth old man. Merry Christmas. And the same to both of you. McGee, I just dropped by to tell you how grateful the school commissioners are for this toy mending project you've undertaken. Oh, he loved doing it, Mr. Mayor. Just give himself here a handful of tools and he'll chisel, chisel, chisel all day long. You have it on this toy deal, the fifth. I, I believe was... me, McGee, when Miss Yegley told me all about it and that you'd volunteered to repair all those toys, I was touched. You were touched? Just look how he fixed this coaster wagon, Mr. Mayor. He couldn't repair the wheel, so he put four holes in the bottom of it so two children with roller skates on could stick their feet through it. <laughs> I thought it was very ingenious, myself. Yeah, but that was... By the I... way, may I help deliver any of these things, McGee? How about this electric train? Is that finished? Oh, he did a wonderful job rewiring that little train, Mr. Mayor. McGee, show the mayor how when you throw the signal switch, the train jumps the track and rolls over three times. <laughs> Oh, I'll have to admit I'm not much with electric stuff. I even get nervous handling a wire coat hanger. 
But it don't matter now, Latrip, because what I hear... Yes, yes, yes. But as I say, McGee, I'll be glad to deliver any of this stuff for you. How about this sled? No, no, Your Honor. I don't believe I... No, 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 no. Not that sled, Latrip. You don't try to pick up... Don't talk nonsense, McGee. No, no. If can handle this, I'm sure I won't have any... trouble. Oh! Oh, my bag! I've broken my bag. Well, we warned you, Mr. Mayor. What's that sled made of? Lead? No. I was putting some new runners on it, Latrib, but the nails were too long and I nailed it to the floor. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, that's quite all right. I'll let you know how my X-rays come out. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Poor man walking up the street, McGee, all bent over, like he was looking for four-leaf clovers. Well, I told him not to pick up that sled, but this being not election time, he don't listen to the common people. See, what was it you started to tell me before he came in, McGee? Uh, oh, yeah. Well, I... Oh, gee, I feel like a mug telling you this, Molly, but... Well, I was... Oh, stop scraping your foot on the carpet and tell me. Okay. Well, when I got downtown with my Christmas money... Merry I... Christmas, Molly. Happy New Year, pal. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. The same to you. Rushing the season a little with that New Year stuff, aren't you, Junior? Well, I thought I'd throw that in early because I won't be seeing you next week. Oh, that's right. You won't, will you? Sitting here next Tuesday night listening to Fred Waring, we'll miss you, Mr. Wilcox. Thank you, Molly. Will you miss me too, pal? I, I don't trust myself to talk, Junior. The very thought of you not dropping in here next Tuesday just kind of overwhelms me. <laughs> yeah, if he starts turning handsprings, Mr. Wilcox, you'll know it's strictly from grief. I know what you mean. I think that's a great idea, though, bringing Fred Waring and that wonderful music of his back for a week. Yeah, me and Molly and the people in Racine thought it would be kind of a nice New Year's greeting to everyone if we asked Fred to take over the Johnson Wax program for next week. Mr. Waring and his Pennsylvanians will sort of express musically our New Year wish for our friends, Mr. Wilcox. Well, I'm going to love it. Tuesday nights, I don't get much chance to listen anyhow to a good musical. Oh, hey, look at all the toys. <laughs> hey, I'll swap you a good jackknife for that musical top, pal. And I'll throw in a ball of kite string, too. No deal, Junior. This stuff isn't mine. I've been trying to fix it up for the kids around town. Without much success, I might add. You might indeed. Look at the dollhouse, Mr. Wilcox. He was fixing the roof on it and suddenly found his elbows in the basement. <laughs> That's because I'm a clumsy oaf. If I'd only kept my... What are you dis- doing, Mr. Wilcox? Just writing a little note. A note? Yes, yeah, to the little girl who gets this dollhouse. Mind if I shove it under the door here? Not at all. Mind if we read it first? Not at all. Go ahead. Let's see. So... To the little girl who gets this lovely dollhouse. When you grow up and have a real house of your own, don't forget to keep it beautiful and clean with Johnson's Wax Products. <laughs> Signed, a friend. Ah. Isn't that sweet? A friend. My goodness. That's the first anonymous letter I ever saw that was constructed. <laughs> yep. Well, I'll see you a week from Tuesday, folks. Happy Yuletide. Same to you, Mr. Wilcox. Old Waxy never quits, does he? McGee, bet... you started to tell me something, you know. Oh, oh yeah. I was. I was trying to tell you what... I feel awful about this kiddo, but... Uh, gee... Was it something about the toys, dearie? Yeah, 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 it was, yeah. Now, look, when I took my Christmas money... This is like reading a continued story in a monthly magazine. <laughs> Come in. Merry Christmas, my dear, and a cheery Yuletide greeting to you, too, Jingle Brain. Hello, Dr. Gamble. Nice to see you. Well, well, if it isn't the mortician's friend. <laughs> Hi, Sulfa Huckster. What are you doing with all the toys, Beaver Bottom? Been hijacking Santa Claus? Well, he undertook to repair them for some children for Christmas, Doctor. You don't say. I'll have to tear up that article I was writing about him for the medical journal. Maybe he does have a heart. Hmm. I've paid you enough dough to listen to it, butcher boy. (laughs) And what are you doing out on Christmas Eve? Not that your absence from the hospital is not a splendid gift for the sick. (laughs) Isn't this a little dull, Doctor? Yes, it is, rather. Ordinarily, I'm busy Christmas Eve pulling fat fathers out of fireplaces or treating them for burned noses. They never seem to learn that long white beards light up quicker than a cigarette. (laughs) By the way, what are you two doing New Year's Eve? Going to spend a quiet evening right here in front of the fireplace, Tonsil (laughs) Peeker. Cracking jokes and walnuts. (laughs) Why? I have reservations at a nightclub if you'd care to join me. Well, thank you so much, Doctor, but we want to stay in that night and listen to Fred Waring. Fred Waring? Something special? Yeah, he's going to be on the air for Johnson's Wax next Tuesday night at the same time. That's it's going to be a novelty for radio, Doctor, a singing program with spoken commercials. That I shall have to hear. I'll tear up my reservations and join you, if I may. Pray do, Doctor, and bring your medicine bag. I always eat too much caramel popcorn on New Year's Eve. I'll be there with full equipment, glutton button. <laughs> Although I'll probably be called out a few times during the evening. Really, Doctor? Yes, New Year's Eve, you know. People forget that slow gin and fast cars can be a poisonous combination. 
As the head gets lighter on the neck, the foot gets heavier on the accelerator. Well, Merry Christmas. Thank you. Now that we've got a minute alone, Molly, look. Remember when I grabbed that bait can with my dough in it and ran down to the hardware store? Yeah. Well, the fact is, I... I... Oh, this is going to make me look like an awful fool. Now, sweetheart, when you fumble that installment wedding ring on my finger, I took it for better or for worse. Hmm. Mostly it's been for the better, so you might as well average it up a little. Well, okay. Here's the situation. When I realized I... Say, maybe you better write me an inter-office memo, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Conversationally, we're not getting any place. Come in. Oh, well, for the... Hi, Teeny. Hi, mister. Hi, Miss McGee. Teeny's the one who talked me into fixing all these toys, Molly. Yes, I know. This? I owe you an explanation. Hey, mister, you don't owe anybody anything, I bet you. Huh? <laughs> I just ordered two and I saw all those toys. Oh, boy. Are they ever super, though? Just like new. Thanks ever so much, mister. Well, I gotta spill this sometime, I guess. Sis, those toys are new. I bought them and had them sent over there. Oh, you mean you couldn't fix the old ones, Mr. Who, couldn't you? Who, couldn't you? No. No, I couldn't. As a toy repairman, I'm about as handy as a turtle at a taffy pole. I flopped the assignment, sis. You did not, I bet you. You were wonderful. Miss Yegley was so happy, she cried. She did? Hmm? I said she did. Did what? Cried. Who? Miss Yegley! I know it. <laughs> He said to thank you ever so much, mister. That's okay, sis. Molly, that's what I've been trying to tell you. Yes, I know, but what took you so long? Oh, my gosh. I feel like a chump. I had to use the money I was saving for your Christmas present. Oh, gee. And you know what? When I opened that fake can, I found I had almost twice as much money saved as I thought. Yes, dearie, I knew what you were up against, so I took the money I was going to buy your present with and put it in with yours. <laughs> what? You mean you knew I... Oh, but Molly, you won't get any presents. Well, neither will you. Huh? And I think it's the nicest Christmas we ever had. It ain't bad at that, is it? Hey, hey, can I bring the boys in now, mister? Huh? What boys? The same boys that always sing for you on Christmas. Oh, sure. Hey, Johnny, Ratty, Buddy, Kenny, come on in, kid. Merry Christmas, Ah, dear, those kids haven't grown an inch since last year. Now, you sit down there, Miss McGee. And, Miss McGee, you sit over there. Okay. No, 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 not at the piano. We're going to use that. All right, boys, are you ready? And a one, and a two, and a three. Like 
Terry. His dull little mouth was drawn up like a bow. <laughs> the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a little old pipe he held tight in his teeth. And the smoke went around and around and around his head like a ring. He was the chubby and plump, a right jolly old jolly old elf. And a left and a left and a left when I saw him in spite of myself. He had a broad face, oh, 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 and a little round belly. <laughs> Oh, no. 